Hi everyone. In the previous classes, we have discussed the refraction of light at plane surfaces. And also we have discussed about the total internal reflection and how it occurs in the nature. We have also discussed the refraction through a glass. And now, in this class, we are going to discuss about the refraction of light at spherical surfaces or curved surfaces. Let us try to discuss what is a spherical surface what is, or what is a curved surface. So basically, we might have seen a sphere. So sphere is an example for this spherical surface. And by these spherical surfaces, we prepare some type of lenses. What are the types of lenses and how they, how they are? Let us discuss. So here, we have a few examples of surface uh, lenses. If you observe the first one, these type of lenses are called biconvex lenses. So these biconvex lenses, how these are? Biconvex lens, it is a part of a sphere. So, here you have a biconvex lens. You can observe this biconvex lens here. So, the biconvex lens is thick at, the, it's, at its middle and it is very thin at the edges. So, this is, by this we can easily find out a biconvex lens. It is thick at its middle and thin at edges. And next one, second type of lens, plano convex lens. Plano convex lens is, for example, in a biconvex lens, if we have one surface is plane surface, another surface is curved, then we call it as plano convex lens. And the next one is biconcave lens. So, how the biconcave lens is? Biconcave lens is opposite to the convex lens. See, like this. The biconvex lens is very thin at its middle and very thick at the edges. You can observe how thick it is at the edges, but at the middle it is very thin. So this is a biconcave lens. Same like that. Plano concave lens. Plano concave lens, it has Plane surface at one end and curved surface at another end. So these are all few examples of lenses we use in our daily life. So where we use the lenses? These lenses are used in the vehicles, that means in the mirrors of the vehicles and also in the cameras, in binoculars and also in the different type of mi microscopes and telescopes, we use lenses in these different type of devices. So now, let us try to discuss how a lens forms image. If an object is placed in front of a lens, the light rays from the object travels towards the lens and they will refract through the lens and form image at the other side. What happens when a lens is made up of different materials? So here you can observe. This biconvex lens is made up of five different materials. So this biconvex lens is made up of five different materials. If we place an object in front of this biconvex lens, which is made up of five different materials, and how many images we get at the other end of the lens? So obviously five, because here are five different materials. Every material has different refractive index, and these five materials have five different refractive indices. That's why. The object placed in front of this biconvex lens, it will form five different five images at different places. 
same like that here we have a concave lens biconcave lens this biconcave lens is made up of three different materials and it will form three different three images at different places because the refractive index values of three materials are different that's why the images are formed by the biconvex lens are three same like that what is the construction of a convex lens or a concave lens let us try to understand this first so just before we have discussed that a biconvex lens or a biconcave lens these are part of a sphere if you take a biconvex lens here it has two spherical surfaces two spherical surfaces if we extend that means if we imagine this curve as a sphere and in another curve this will also form another sphere that means every biconvex lens has two spherical surfaces each surface can be formed as a sphere same like this if we understand so this line the midline this line is called as principal axis and the midpoint of the geometric midpoint of the lens is called as a pole and this sphere the center of this sphere this is called as center of curvature here we have denoted it as c1 because we we have two centers of curvature for a lens that's why one is denoted by c1 and another one is denoted by c2 because each lens is made up of two spherical surfaces that's why every lens has two centers of curvatures two radius of curvatures and two focal lengths the first center of curvature is denoted by c1 and this is the radius of this sphere and this is denoted by r1 radius of curvature if we take the second surface of the sphere that means this one so this surface has another center of curvature denoted by c2 and this also has another radius of curvature it is also denoted by r2 same like that the distance between pole and the center of curvature pole and the center of curvature this distance is called as focal length and this is first focal length this is second focal length f1 and f2 like that for every lens we have two centers of curvatures two radius of curvatures two focal lengths same like that for a biconcave lens also we can imagine like this and now let us discuss what is the equation to find the refraction of light through a spherical surface let us try to understand this now so here you can observe this diagram let us suppose at the point o we have placed an object and this is rarer medium that means air and this is denser medium that means let us suppose it is a glass so from the object o the light rays are passing like this and after reaching this denser medium the light ray refracts that means it bends we know that why it bends because the speed of light is changing that's why the light ray is bending here and now if you imagine so here at the point i the image has been formed now let us suppose the refractive index of this rarer medium is n1 and the refractive index of this denser medium is n2 and also the object distance that means 
the distance between pole and the object this distance is called as object distance it is denoted by u same like that the distance between pole and the image this distance is called as image distance it is denoted by v and this is the curvature radius of curvature let us suppose this is r now what is the formula to find the refraction through this spherical surface so here is the formula to find it. n2 by v minus n1 by u z equals to n2 minus n1 by r here n1 and n2 r the refractive index values of two mediums v is image distance u is object distance and r is the radius of curvature by applying this formula we can find out and now what happens if we place a plane mirror here that means instead of this spherical surface if we place a plane mirror how will be the refraction what is the formula here so here also the two refractive index values are n1 and n2 and same object distance is u image distance is v but here we don't have radius of curvature because for a plane surface the radius of curvature r is become zero so for a plane surface the radius of curvature is zero that's why in this equation if we substitute the value r as zero the right side part will become zero now the equation changes like this n2 by v minus n1 by u is equals to zero so we use this equation for for refraction through a plane surface and we use this equation for the refraction through a curved surface or spherical surface so this is about the introduction part of the refraction through curved surfaces or spherical surfaces so in the next classes we discuss the image formation by the convex lens that means when object is placed at a different places and the image will also form at different places and we also discuss the natures of the images in the next class